Hi, can you can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? We'll be starting in a few minutes. Great to see that some people have arrived. I see Karen was on for a bit. Fantastic, thanks Karen. Thanks, Jane. I'm impressed that you're inside watching a, a webinar on this amazing evening. Um, hottest summer of more than nine years, something like that. I was just looking on the web BBC website. So, yeah. Great, we're really glad that you're here. Just a couple more minutes. Where are you from? If you'd like to just type and let me know um, where you're calling in from. Nottingham, Emma. Nice to meet you. Karen, North Devon. Kerry, Norwich. Okay, fantastic. I'm in Norwich as well. And what about um, Jane? Austin, Norfolk. Okay, fantastic. Austin, Norfolk. That's brilliant. We'll just wait another minute or so and see who else joins us. Have you been to webinars before? Have you attended some of these webinars? Fantastic, Karen, three or four, brilliant. Kerry's been to one. Mm -hmm. James been to three and say. That's great. Well this is my first one and I have to say I'm really impressed with this this system and how it works. I think it's brilliant. Such a good way of uh, being able to share screens and communicate. Emma's been to a few as well. Such a good way of being able to communicate. Um, not only to be looking at slides but also to be looking at websites. So yeah, really good. All right, well, it is seven o'clock. I think. I think I'm going to get started so we don't waste too much time. Um, all right, so my name is, as you know, Helen King, and um, my experience is I've worked in publishing for a number of years. Uh, Adele's just joined us. Hello, Adele. Um, I've worked in publishing for a number of years, uh, publishing for countries like Spain, as well as for countries around Africa, in Asia, like a bit of Latin America as well. So um, publishing a lot for learners of English as a second language, as a foreign language, as an additional language. And my that's my particular area of interest, as well as uh, the issue of literacy. So I'm really pleased to be talking to you today about supporting literacy through the summer months, summer weeks, I should say. All right. So today's discussion, I see that Terry Jones has just joined us. Hello, Terry. Uh, today's discussion, we're going to briefly discuss literacy, what we think it means, as well as issues we've experienced around literacy, briefly discuss the importance of individual imagination and creativity, what makes each child tick, and how this relates to developing literacy, and most importantly, to discuss strategies to encourage children to develop their literacy during the summer, through discovering books, encouraging their curiosity about the world around them, and we'll be looking at a couple of online tools as well. So starting off, literacy. 
I'd be interested to hear from you. What has been your experience of how the national curriculum and assessment standards relate to literacy? If you could just take a minute or so, have a think and drop me a line. Have you been very involved with um, delivering phonics, synthetic phonics, which has been found to be very helpful um, for, for children to decode words, as well as the nuts and bolts of spelling and grammar and punctuation, all these tools that give children a framework for reading. I see Emma and Karen are typing. It'd be good to hear from you. Karen works with phonics. Yeah, read, write, ink. I think we're in agreement that phonics and, and spelling, Johnny Phonics, oh yes, Johnny Phonics, famous Johnny Phonics. Um, Emma says, currently doing volunteer work, in set day national curriculum, or oh, yeah. So um, a lot has been said about phonics, and it is tremendously helpful. But we know that literacy is more than just phonics and spelling and grammar punctuation, although we acknowledge they are incredibly important. Um, it's also, importantly, comprehension, meaning, how meaning is conveyed through text, through language, and it's about reading enjoyment. Jane says, sorry, her computer froze. Okay. Um, so, literacy is all of these things, but it, and it's important not to get too bogged down in the nuts and bolts of phonics and spelling and grammar because they can hold back on fluency and reading fluency is really what I think helps to engage the children the most. Um, reading well at the, there's a website called Read On Get On which is a national initiative for reading, we'll be looking at this later on this evening. And They've defined reading well at the end of Key Stage 2, so the end of primary, as being defined as level 4B. And I'm going to very briefly summarize what that means um, without going into too much detail. For stories, it means interpreting the actions of characters, being able to recognize the difference that context makes to a story, both historical context and geographical context. Um, being able to talk about how the writer has used language to convey different concepts or emotions. They're able to identify themes. Um, a reader who's reading well reads a range of stories, magazines, websites, emails, and reference books. They can talk about how different texts are structured, and they can use this structure to follow an argument or to follow a story. They know how to summarize the text and to clarify what they've learned. They know how to infer meaning from a text and how to predict what they think is going to happen next. Do you think that this sounds like your children, and I'd like to again hear from you, the children that you work with, you will all be teaching and, and working with uh, children of different ages. But how does that fit with what you think could be feasible and possible for your children? I'll just give you a minute to have a think and drop me a quick line. It's 
great when I see multiple attendees are typing. Brilliant. Interesting. Karen says, I work with the same child who, although reads fantastically, can never recall what he has read or attach any emotions to the storyline. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic example of focusing on the nuts and bolts, but not actually on the meaning and, and really emotionally engaging because the emotions are so tremendously powerful to convey meaning. And Terry says, we do a lot of activities to develop those skills in the class, that's fantastic. Work with less able and these skills are way beyond their reach at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Jane says, I work in reception, beginning to read and encourage to predict what's going to happen next. I mean, I think it's obviously a, a few issues that I've written down here that I wanted to share with you, the sorts of typical issues um, that come up is... Do you find that with your children that you're working with, their parents are involved? Uh, that their parents read to them and talk with them about reading on a frequent, daily basis? That can be a big issue. Um, that can really make or break for many children for their motivation and, and for building up their, their understanding of reading. Uh, do you find that boys have more difficulty than girls? That's another common experience that, that seems to happen. Do you find that children from low-income families struggle more? Maybe if they come from a book-poor family, they don't have very many books at home, they won't be so fluent with reading as a child who comes from a book-rich um, environment where they have numbers of books that they can dip in and out of. Just having a look at the chat to see what people say. Yeah, in reception, parental involvement is key. It absolutely is. Yeah, Terry, that's what you say. Your group of seven is all boys, the majority lack support at home. Yeah, Helen says, girls are more enthusiastic than the boys. And Karen agrees with Terry, lack of home support is definitely the biggest hurdle. I mean, I, I personally think that is such a key, that if you can get, somehow try and find, this is something we'll talk about a little bit more, that um, by, by parents not being involved, it can bring up so many issues for the, the children. Um, it means that they're not necessarily reading outside of the classroom or writing outside of the classroom. Helen says both my girls are very interested in reading and they are bookworms. Yeah, exactly. It's something that can be handed on down the generations. And these are issues that as educators we have to deal with. Maybe there isn't a lot of support outside of the classroom. However, there are things that we can be done, that we can do. Um, because the ability to be able to read well at primary has been linked with achievement, not only at secondary and your results at secondary, but also as an adult, the sort of job they get, I mean, it's obvious, the sort of job they get, the earning power they have, also, apparently, their health, um, and whether or not they stay out of jail. Reading about, I was doing some research earlier about looking at uh, all of the ramifications of not being able to read, and it is it is so crucial to be able to uh, give your children this head start in life. Kerry says that's fantastic. They have workshops to encourage the skills needed for parents to be involved. I'll be showing you later on some websites um, that you can share with with parents that really do make things easier for them to get involved with reading and literacy. All right, let's talk a little bit about imagination and creativity. What makes a child tick? Every child is unique and has their own passion, something that is deeply important to them. 
And their imagination and creativity is tied up with this unique quality. For children who are less able or less interested, this can be this unique thing that makes them tick can be a key motivator to get them to start reading and engaging in literacy. By encouraging their imagination and creativity, we can build a child's confidence and their self-esteem. And we need imaginative and creative adults in this new technological world. Reading provides children with a window into other ways of being, other worlds, other experiences, other perspectives. It can, from sitting in your bedroom, a child can expand their experience of the world just beyond their four walls, which is tremendously powerful, as we, we well know. Also, literacy as we have known it has expanded into what has been called the new literacies, where through the web, we are not just consumers of text and meaning, we are also creators of text and meaning, and children, possibly more than us, are getting more and more involved in writing and, and sharing things online. So the consumer has become the creator and vice versa. And we want to be able to develop children's ability to be able to consume, to read, but also to imagine and create with fluency and with confidence. And this is what I think literacy means today. I'm just having a quick look at the chat room to see. Yes, parents, workshops. Yeah. All right. So carrying on, imagination and creativity. Two writers that you may have heard of. Um, I thought I'd just add this in as uh, two books if you're interested to... Uh, read. Ken Robinson, you may have seen his TED Talk, the most viewed ever TED Talk of all time, uh, 8 million views, and he talks about creativity, creative schools, developing creative schools, getting children to be creative because we need creative people to build our future. Also, as I'm sure many of you know, Kieran Egan has written extensively about the, the role of the imagination and how important it is in learning. Um, so just two, two references there, food for thought. Creative Schools has just come out. Educated Mind came out about 10 years ago. No, about 20, more than 10 years ago. Um, but those really good, good books. So more importantly now, let's get on to strategies for summer literacy. Um, six weeks off school. A lot of learning can be forgotten in that time, but equally a lot of learning can be done in that time. And it's a very rich opportunity for children to go out there, engage in the world, and really develop so many opportunities to develop their literacy. The most important one, discovering books. And thinking of your role as a teaching assistant, um, to be having conversations with them in this last week or so, about books, really engaging their, their desire to want to discover more about books. Talk with them about which books do they like. Um, do they like reading about fantasy, dragons, vampires? Do they like non-fiction? Do they like to read about reality, to be learning more about the world? Are you doing follow-up activities when you're reading with them? Um, Things like story mapping, things like response drawing, uh, talking about books that they've read, getting into these sorts of habits for them to be not only reading books, but also to be, um, to be, I got slightly distracted here by the, this chat. Um, so not only to be reading books, but also to be talking about them is a very good habit that if they can be doing it with you, they can be doing it with uh, their parents as well, and that's something that you can be encouraging. Moving on to the next point, interest and involvement at home. To start talking with parents, seeing how you can be, you can share some of the websites we'll be looking at later. Um, 
give them some very simple ideas of things that they could be doing with their children. I'm sure most parents, if they aren't so involved with their children's literacy, they could, um, it could be because they feel anxious about it, They've, it's not something that they have the habit of. And if you give them a few simple tools, just some simple ideas of going to the library, there are so many initiatives at the library, and we'll look at them, one of them in a moment, uh, going to bookshops, um, making them feel confident about, about uh, being able to engage. And this is something that they can share with their children. Go out and discover books, discover the love of, of reading. National initiatives that are happening, you may already know about these. Um, I think they're fantastic. The Summer Reading Challenge, which that was held last year as well. The challenge to read six books during the summer. We'll go onto the website later. It has a number of book recommendations from other children, which I think is fantastic because it's it's uh, not just you as an adult or adults recommending books and saying these are books you should be reading. It's other children saying, hey, this is a really good book. Um, so I think that, that should be quite motivating for your children. Also, a community for children to be able to share their thoughts, their, their ideas, an opportunity to write reviews and to share them with the, the online community and competitions. Uh, we'll be looking at the Book Trust website that uh, talks about the Children's Book Week, which is next week. Fantastic, just in time for reading. Also, with book recommendations, they have a fantastic book gifting program. Um, and they have lots of resources as well. So two great national initiatives just showing everybody is behind developing the importance of developing reading and making sure that children are reading during the summer. Uh, something else you can encourage in your work with your children before they go on, on the break is to have conversations with them about to develop their curiosity about the world, especially for those boys who are maybe having difficulty, um, who are having difficulty with their reading. Maybe they're not so interesting. They don't think it's so cool. Why would they want to go out reading? By engaging them through curiosity about the world, it gives them a reason to want to start reading, to get facts, to start finding out facts, piecing them together. So a few points I put down here: natural history. You don't even need to go away on holiday. Walk out your front door and there is so much going on. And developing, this is we know when science developed back in the Victorian era, and people started to really look closely at things. And the more you look at things, we know the more fascinating they become. You want to find out more and more. The more facts you find out, the more you want to start piecing things together. You start imagining the connections. I wonder, hypothesizing. I wonder what you know, what this is about, let me know more. So that that could be something that could help to engage those children, those boys, especially who are less interested in reading, less uh, used to reading. Also, local history, learning about the past, speaking to your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, well, if they're still around, uncles and aunts, um, finding out about how things used to be, those stories. And then that can be a hook into doing more reading, going and finding books about the history, about history from the past, looking online. Maybe if they go away to a holiday location, find out about the location, find out about geography, the, the history, the people, the culture, the food. There's so much to learn about. So um, I think, you know, to be having conversations with children now, just remind them how interesting the world is. And, how if you just open up your, your eyes, you can engage your imagination, you engage your curiosity, your creativity, and through books, it can expand your horizons. Also, another thing that uh, you could be showing to your children are a couple of online writing tools. We'll be looking at these in a little bit. Um, the first one, Read, Write, Think has some fantastic tools that really help to engage children and get them writing in a way that's very fun, very structured, really easy. Um, 
the first one I wrote down here, comic, they've got loads of resources, but I thought these three were ones I particularly liked. Comic creator, where the child creates their own comic. A trading card creator, where they create trading cards that they can then trade in a, with partners and groups. And Diamante poems, creating poems within a structure uh, for those, those children who are more, who are interested in really developing their imaginative creativity. Also, uh, storybird.com, which is a great website. A lot of illustrators have uploaded their illustrations there. They are beautiful illustrations. Very rich visual images that really trigger the imagination and giving children an opportunity to start writing, to read the writings of others and to start writing. So two fantastic online writing tools that just, you know, it makes, it makes our lives so much easier to have these tools. Going online doesn't just have to be about going into chat rooms and playing games online. There is a lot, for those children who like to go online, there's a lot that they can be doing. So before the holidays, you can have a discussion with your children about their interests and about their reading habits and engaging, doing what you can to engage their reading with linking it with their passion, what, what really matters to them. You can negotiate with them an end of holiday goal. Get them to speak out and to say what they want. Get them to make choices. Get them to suggest what they could do so that it's something that you've both agreed upon and uh, they feel that they want to, they want to do this. Uh, the focus of this is on engaging the children and on building their confidence in self-expression. So engaging them through reading and giving them opportunities to express themselves, be it book reviews, be it in the chat rooms, and we'll have a look at in a moment, or in those online tools that we, we talked about for developing their writing. Very importantly, getting back again to involving parents and carers. It is really crucial to involve them as much as possible in, firstly, acknowledging the importance of um, reading and how fabulous if they can get their children reading, going to the library and engaged in the world of reading, whether it's online or print books, um, for them to acknowledge the importance, for them to be have brought into the importance of it and um, to support their child, also to show them the websites that we'll be looking at, and with the ultimate goal of developing a habit, hopefully a lifelong habit, but a habit for the summer of reading and writing on a frequent basis, not just once a week, but if they can be doing it for, say, 10 minutes each day, uh, there's been some research saying that frequent reading even just 10 minutes a day can be more powerful than doing it a big batch every so often. Also, talking about parents and carers, research has been done to say that fathers often don't get so involved in their child's reading and, and learning often. It's the mother who's, 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 I mean, this is a stereotype, but it does seem to be that often mothers get more involved. But if a father can show attention and show interest, that again can go a tremendously long way to helping mot motivate the children, especially for boys. All right, I'm going to have a quick look at the chat room. Um, Judith said, my children have done the summer reading challenge for several years. That's brilliant. Um, although Judith says, unfortunately, lots of children have very little interest in going to the library or reading. So it's great for those children who are already supported. I think going to the library, you know, you go to a library, I went to the Norwich Library yesterday, and I think it is absolutely fabulous, the amazing resources they've got there, um, and the initiatives that are going on there, it's tremendously supportive. So even just to get your child to visit the library once, I think that will be enough, hopefully, to hook and, and help to develop them. Um, do the thing, quite tricky engaging 14 to 15 their ability students, yeah. Well, let's have a look at these websites now. I'm going to move to the classroom page and share my screen.
Let's hope this works. Okay. Can everybody see it? If you could just somebody just drop me a line quickly to say that you've um, you got it. Yes, thanks, Karen. Great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So the first, the first. That's great. Everybody can see it. The first website we're going to look at is the Summer Reading Challenge. I'm just going to walk you through. I mean, there's a lot to get through here, so you will. You have all these web links. Um, on the Adobe Connect site, so you can have a look at these as well afterwards. This first website, um, looking at the home page, we've got the Summer Reading Challenge for children to join in on, um, setting up a profile, looking at the recommendations, stuff for your next read, okay, book sorter. Maybe my computer is going to break down on me. You can have a look at that when you get online. So they have uh, they have the recommendations as I mentioned. They also fantastically have games, which my computer is not going to let me get to. That's a shame. You can maybe come back to that in a moment. Okay, moving on to Book Trust. Um, this is also a fabulous website. It's got lots of information about Children's Book Week. Let me go back to home page. Children's Book Week coming six. That's next week. Each year, Book Trust makes available a range of Children's Book Week resources. So you can have a look at that. Oops. Maybe it's find all resources. Yeah. Making a comics jam, writer's book, there's loads, loads and loads of things. So this is a great website to have a look at, just have a browse around. Um, let me go back. I wanted to show you the book gifting programs for children. They, um, for children who are fostered, they have a uh, book gifting program. Uh, it's called the Letterbox Club. So have a look and see if you can find it. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, the Letterbox Club. For those children who've been fostered may, may not have a huge amount of uh, reading material at home, this is a program for children between the age of 5 and 13, where they are sent, you can see that envelope, a letterbox of, I think it's six books, um, I'm not sure exactly, but they're given quite a few books in the post, for them to enjoy and explore over a six month period. Isn't that fantastic? Really excellent. Also, we've looked at the resources. Um, about us, programs. Loads of recommendations here. Okay, let's go back to summer reading challenge, the games. Something that you can show, show to the parents to share 
with their children. So, title dash. Just have a quick look. Play the game. The grim. I'm going to put Reaper. Oh! I don't know if I've done the right thing. Oh, okay. So this is born to. I don't know what that would be. Born to live. No? Never imagine. These are obviously books that I don't know about, but uh, that's one of the games. Mythical Maze Race. Lots of interesting stuff there. A uh, third website, National Literacy Trust. I'm sure you must know about this as well. It's got a range of incredible resources. Um, and you go to Network. You can become part of the Literacy Trust Network, which provides, uh, provides you and your school with a number of fantastic resources. Things like the Literacy Guide for Schools, they put together for 2014-15. Um, resources such as... Mm -hmm. Downloads. Some you can go on to without being a network member. I mean, you can see if you are a member, there's, there's loads. But uh, let's go back to the pirate. Pirate reading adventure. Something that maybe children can do with their parents. Again, parents who may feel less confident, they can get to a website like this and download these stories, have some ideas. Um, yeah, so there's a lot there. Moving on to Read, Write, Think. This is a, an American website that has got... Earlier on, I was talking about the different resources, online tools for writing. And you can find it just here on the home page. Go to Parent and After School Resources and click on More. You can choose by the age, the kinds of, I mean, obviously this is American, but you can figure out what, what age would be suitable. They have activities and projects, games and tools, print out podcasts. Let's look at grades three and four. Games and tools. So, I mean, it's just so much. <clears throat> Book cover creator, comic creator that I mentioned. Let's have a quick look at that. Hopefully, let's see if my computer will work. Okay, welcome to the comic creator. What is the name of your cartoon? Let's say, um, having fun. With Wow, okay, let's select three panels. Okay, so now as the loom is by clicking here, 
as props by clicking here. Ah, okay. So they can start to add and create add balloons, right? Different size balloons. Add people, different kinds of people. All right, fantastic. That's so cool. Okay. Um, just going back, looking at a couple more. Fractured fairy tales is quite fun. What is a fractured fairy tale? It's a story that uses fairy tales you know and changes a character setting point of view. Okay, so they can change. It changes. Let's see. Once upon a time, there was a lonely prince. One day, he was sitting by a pond when a frog popped out of the water. Oh. <laughs> so by giving a model of a fractured fairy tale, it then gives the child the chance to uh, to uh, create their own fractured fairy tale. Basically, a fairy tale that they come up with their own sort of wacky, different style of ending. So fantastic resources. I mean, we don't have time to look through all of them. Um, Although I did notice there was a Diamante poem, which is also lovely. And these are things that you can be doing with your children in, in the class anyway, if you are working with them online. Let's see examples. Really creative and imaginative. So in terms of uh, getting them feeling creative, this could be a very good tool that you could use. Cinnamon poem and cream poem. Right. Okay, so moving on. Storybird. This is the website that I mentioned that has some um, fantastic illustrations uploaded for children to read books that other children have, have written using these illustrations as inspiration. They can read, and then they can write, and they can share. You have to sign up for it. Your words are amazing stories. Very gorgeous artwork. Comment on books you enjoy to interact with their creators. I love that because it's engaging. For the reader becomes the reader becomes the writer, and the the writer becomes the reader. It's a very um, very much, I think, the sort of spirit that our children would would engage with. Yeah, thanks, Judith. It's lovely, isn't it? Safe, positive community for creativity. You can find favorite new authors, new books. Find new friends from across the globe, but this is international, and discover their stories too. See Storybird used in creative new ways every day. Really gorgeous. And share, share your poetry as well. Really motivating. Lovely. Families. Maintain bonds, share traditions, unite generations, make stories in minutes, and learn and enjoy them for life. Something that parents can do together with their children. Talking about creating a, a story, maybe talking about what I mentioned earlier about um, engaging curiosity. Um, maybe the child can find out about something on holiday and then with their parents start to create a book about it. Why not? They've discovered a beautiful, safe place with an excited and supportive community of readers, writers, and artists of all ages. Why not join them? Make, read, and share visual stories. Lovely. All right, and then next website is Start With a Book. Um, again, an American website. Something you can show your children's parents. 
it has got so much that is interesting science discoveries. Explore our summer science themes. Let's look at the adventure reading packs. Adventure reading packs, reading adventure packs designed to encourage hands on fun and learning, centered around paired fiction and non fiction. So, PDFs to download, books. Going back to the home page. Yes, you can see there's there's so much there, and the idea is that this is um, for parents to use for their children. So lots of helpful resources for parents as well. Support, methodology, ideas. Yes, yeah, so there's lots there. And they've got a calendar. Fill your calendar with summer reading and fun. That's really great. I mean, we all need inspiration, and it's so helpful to have these websites to help us get some new ideas. And, and um, you know, whether you're a motivated parent or not so motivated, I think we all need this sort of inspiration. Emma says she likes it. Yeah, it's great. Okay, and then finally, uh, Read on Get On website. This has been. Uh, who's backing us? I mean, let's just have a look at this. It's a massive initiative. David Williams, Mining Plus, Lauren, Lauren Laverne, David Cameron, more politicians, more writers, uh, you know, award winning children's authors, organizations, number of organizations. Um, on this website. Their initiative, they've been doing lots of research and um, initiatives to get children reading well. So you can get onto the site and read a number of reports that they've done. This report here, the launch report, which is just come out now, Power of Reading came out just before um, before the elections, and that is that's been downloaded and it's on the Adobe Connect for you to take away with you. But also, you equally you can get it from this website. Lots of very interesting uh, context and background. So there definitely does seem to be a critical mass for getting children reading and. Don't let our poorest children drop off the map. Let's get kids reading. There's lots of interesting ideas out there. All right. So just coming back to you now. Great. Oh, dear. Do you still have a blue screen, Karen and Judith? And Jane? These websites are all, no, okay, good. <laughs> These websites are all on the list at the Adobe Connect, so you can have a look at them after this webinar. Okay, I'm going to come back to stop sharing. Coming back to the summary, we've got 30 minutes. 
Um, any questions? Is there anything? We've got a few minutes if anybody would like to share anything or ask any questions. And if you'd like to do the polls, maybe while you're while you're thinking. As I said, all the these are the resources for you to take away, the slides and that power of reading um, document, as well as the web links. I do think it's fantastic, you know, this, it's very easy to complain about technology and how children are always on the computer and aren't reading as much print books as maybe they used to when I certainly was young. But at the same time, um, at the same time, to see, it's so encouraging to see all these amazing resources on the web as well. So I think we can, you know, make, make this work for us very well. Adele says, any recommended site for phonics for reception or phonics guided reading? Have you ever heard of Bug Club? It's published by Pearson. Um, I think it is a subscription model, but have a look at it online. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I've worked for Pearson and when they brought it out, but I was publishing for Spain at the time, um, and we looked at Bug Club for adapting it for the Spanish market. It has really engaging videos and um, it's what really struck me is it's so integrated both within the reading and the writing and it's done in such a way that it's really engaging and cute, you know, using bugs. The illustrations are really dynamic and, and beautiful um, and I think they won some design award. This was back in 2012. So maybe it would be worth having a look at that. That's called the Bug Club. Terry Jones says Big Club. It's called Active. Well, is that Bug Club? It's called Active Learning now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's useful. Busy things. <laughs> All right, are there any other questions? I've sort of, this being my first webinar, I've rushed along, not being sure quite how long everything was going to take, but um, I hope that's been just a sort of starting point of uh, interest and good luck with the next, the next week. Um, and do get involved with the, the National Book Week. I think it's you know, really great timing. So... Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Go and have an amazing evening. Go and enjoy the rest of this wonderful day. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your messages. That's really nice. I'll just wait for the last ones of you to finish typing. Great, Kerry says lots of helpful resource references. Yeah, you're very welcome. Like I say, I find it amazing. Once you start looking and you see how much there is on the web, it is fantastic. But I think equally it can be quite daunting because you know there's loads out there. Um, and I think thinking about you supporting parents, if you can just give them a few very useful web links, maybe take the time to show them the website to see how interesting it can be. I mean, I've shown it to you and, and clearly you found it interesting and you know something something helpful to take away. And I think exactly the same thing with parents and it only takes a couple of minutes um, and they can see the power of it and it's so easy. To have 
online resources that can really help children with their literacy makes being online a good thing, not just playing games and yeah, emailing. All right, great. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, have a good evening. All the best. Okay, bye.